If you're managing multiple projects and need a better way to keep everything organized and on track, then Asana Portfolios is the feature for you. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a portfolio and add projects to it and customize it to effectively streamline your project management. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Marquis Murray. I'm the founder of Surface, an Asana partner and consultancy. And I make videos like this every single week to help you and your team get the most out of your Asana investment. So if it's your first time here and you're getting value from these videos or this video, hit the subscribe button, uh, like this video, share it with someone who you think would also get some value out of it and make sure you hit the notification bell so you never miss a video in the future. Let's get into the demo. So again, we were talking about portfolios today and essentially what a portfolio is, is a folder. A folder you can put and group like projects into. There are so many different use cases for this. I'm gonna show you a couple different use cases and then I'll let you explore this with your team a little bit more. And I will say that for anything we see in this insight section, whether it's reporting, portfolios, or goals, you need to be on at least the advanced tier of Asana. If you are on the free or the starter, you're not gonna have access to this. But when you navigate and click to portfolios, you'll either see a bunch of portfolios that are already there, or you'll have the ability to create your own, which we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna call this one on tour campaign. Now I already have a group of projects and I wanna be able to group all of them and see the shared status um, and information across all of those projects in one place. I'm gonna show you why that's really cool in a second here. Let's spell campaign correctly. There we go. And we're gonna start adding projects to it. Okay, so when you go to the portfolio, it's pretty much just a blank screen to get going until you start adding work to it now right here we have this add work button i'm going to put my projects in you have the ability at this point to um, either create a new portfolio you can create a new project from here or add existing portfolios which we call nested portfolios so a portfolio within a portfolio within a portfolio you can do that inside of asana it's like portfolio inception a little bit and then you can also add projects here you can group inside of those nested portfolios if you wanted to uh, and so in this case i'm gonna keep it really simple i'm just gonna add in the four projects that i want to track within this on tour campaign so there's the first one there asana you've got to add a little checkbox you've got to add a checkbox where these are all the ones i want like i can just check them i don't have to come back in here and do this every time but let's do it for now. Let's add them in and last one, there we go. So now I've got all the projects that I want to track. And so um, at this level, you can see a high level status of all of these projects. If I wanted to um, update the status of this Tokyo event, I could either come and click on add status here. I can go and update my status. It's on track. I can report, I can pull over highlights from this, you know, and put all that information and then I can post that update. And then it shows up right there or i can go into the project itself go to the overview and then you know do the status update right from here it doesn't really matter it gets you to the same place and now you can see we have two on track projects and one off track project then you can also track the status by either task or milestone completion at the project level so right now we're tracking um, task progress so if i go into this london event I'm just going to select a bunch of these and I'm going to complete them and we'll go back to our portfolio because when you create that portfolio, it creates this little bread, which is really cool. It can take you right back. So whereas before we were 8% complete, now we should be much further ahead. Where did those tasks go? Let's go and complete some more tasks here and we'll remove our filter so we can see what tasks we have completed. Let's go back to our, there we go. So now it's slowly moving up. There are a lot of tasks in that project, but as you complete them, this will slowly go up closer to that hundred. Uh, tasks aren't doing it for you. You can simply change the progress um, from task to milestone. And now you can track based on the milestones that you have within that project. So here we have all of these different milestones. We can see we've two of them have been completed and all of these red ones are overdue milestones so then we'd be able to go into the project and see all of those milestones and see yep we've got some overdue ones let's complete some of those milestones so i'm going to remove that filter again save that view there we go and let's go back to milestones like so and now we can see that those milestones have changed 
right? We can change the date duration of these projects here. We can add priority here as well, or we can add ownership here as well. Uh, like we can do at the project level, we can also add custom fields here to report on all the information that we need. So if we were tracking um, budgets, as an example, we could add in a number field. And I'm gonna search my library first, see what we have for budget. So we've already got one there, that's great. And I can put in, you know, we've got 10,000 for this event, we've got 7,500 for this event. And so that's really nice, but what if you already have this information inside of the project? This is what I really like about portfolios. Now you can add a roll up field. And so as long as there is in this example, a budget field inside of these projects with information already populated, we can have them all roll up from those projects and be displayed inside a portfolio. In this case, we don't have a budget inside of those projects. What we have is a cost here, but you can also have a roll up for estimated time actual time percentage allocation so you can really monitor and see exactly how your team is doing but let's just add in the cost here and we know that there is a cost field in each of these projects and there's already been values assigned in each of those projects as well and so that's what we're seeing here in the roll up so you can do lots of other things you can add lots of other custom fields to give yourself the information you need but i'm just going to keep it here for now and we'll move on next thing i want to show you is you can also group so if i wanted to group by priority, I could go in and I could group by that priority, which is our status update. And now we can see all of the projects that are high priority, medium or low priority. And we can also go in and group by status as well. So to see what's on track, what's off track. And this one just doesn't have any update. Let's put this one at risk so that we can have a third option there. There we go. So now we can see all the projects based on their status. So really cool. Now, if we go to the timeline view, let's just zoom out. We can see the timeline and the duration of all those projects. And if we need to make changes, we can simply make changes to the timeline. We can slip these around in time, but really what this does is it gives us a sense of how many projects we have going on at a time, when projects are ending, and when we could potentially start new projects based on our team's bandwidth. So it gives us lots of flexibility here and visibility into what's going on at a really high level. Then we can get into dashboards. Dashboards are really cool a portfolio because what it does is rather than just giving you the information that's within a single project, you can get information on all of the projects that are added to your portfolio. So what this is doing is it's giving me a total task count um, based on the four projects I've added to my portfolio, 354. Out of those four projects, I've only completed 36 and there are 318 incomplete. And so within this dashboard, we can see other charts and other reports for things that we want to visualize. We can then go and we can add in other charts for different things. So if we wanted to see a donut chart, all the tasks within the project that, let's see what custom fields we have. Let's go event type in this case. Great. So we've got task event type and task count, and then we can add additional filters to get more information. So we can look at task completion status. If we would just want to see the completed tasks that are related to an event type, or if we want to see the incomplete event type task, we can also choose that information and add additional filters as we need. So really powerful. And then that chart gets added to our overall dashboard here. And then we can go in and like we can do at the project level to report status, we can also then report the status of this entire project. So a couple things I really like here, if you um, are on the advanced plan or the starter plan, you're going to have some AI features, but with advanced, you can have a, a project or a portfolio, sorry, I'll say summary, where if I subscribe to that every single week, Asana will tell me, hey, your portfolio summary is ready to be viewed. And then it's going to generate a summary of that portfolio based on all the activity changes, all of the task status changes, all of the files that have been added, all of the comments that have happened or been placed into uh, various tasks. It's going to take into account all that information and gather the context. And then it's going to give you a summary. So as a leader, you can come in really quickly and see exactly what you need at a, at a glance without having to drill down into each individual project or task and be commenting and asking people, hey, what's going on with this? And so here is our summary here. Pause to read if you want to. This is a demo space, so none of it's really relevant, but it's giving me a really high level overview of what's happened from September 20th, so the last seven days to now. It's giving me these headers. I can copy this or I can share the summary and then it will give me uh, the ability to make edits and changes and then I can share it as a message 
to this entire portfolio. So let's just send that. And then if I want to go a step further, I can now get a status update of this entire portfolio. And again, AI is there to save the day. So let's say I'm overall, I'm happy with the, the progress that's been made. So I'm going to set this to on track and then I'm going to draft with AI. So it's going to take into account those four projects. We can add guidance where I want to highlight the percentage of tasks that have been completed in the week by event type. Now, as you know, you got to play around with AI. It's, it's likely not going to give me exactly what I want, but let's see what it comes back with. And there we go. It's given us our status update. It's got a really nice summary. Key points, the London event has entered its post event phase with multiple follow-up tasks in progress. Tokyo and Sydney events are also in their post event um, stages. So let's see if it actually did what I wanted it to. Oh, here we go. Regarding task completion, we've observed varying progress across different event types. So large events, host large event for Dublin, 100% of tasks have been completed since la in the last week workshop which is another event type 75 percent of tasks have been completed in the last week and then post event types it's because i gave it that additional prompt that it provided me with this information so it's really really changing how we think about status updates gone are the days where you had to take 30 to 45 minutes to come up with one status update on friday at 4 30 when this is the last thing you want to be doing so now i can go in and i can edit this draft and make changes. I can add in additional context through charts if I wanted to um, by simply clicking and dragging these highlights in. I can see overall portfolio health as well based on all the projects that are here. And then I can simply share this with my team. And so that's my status update done by AI within seconds, not minutes or hours then the last thing i want to show you here uh, is the workload feature and so this is one of my favorite features across asana because what it allows you to do is see the workload that's currently on your team members and see what their capacity is potentially take on more so when you first open up workload if this is a new portfolio the default that it's going to show you is the task count so these are the tasks that are assigned to each person. It gives you task counts per person, right? So there's no capacity set just yet. There's no effort beyond um, the amount of tasks that are assigned. So we're gonna go and create some of them. So up here, you're gonna click on task count, okay? And there are no fields by which we can add a measure of effort just yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add fields and Asana is recommending two things. First is estimated time where we can assign hours, a percentage of a task over time. And so I'm going to go with estimated time here. And these are the two projects that currently don't have that field. So we're going to make sure that that field gets added. And so you can have a default of 40 hours um, across the board, or you can go in and you can change this for the individual as well. So if some people are working half time or part time or they're, they're contractors, you can put that time in here so that it does change for each of those folks. So now that we're viewing estimated time we've set our measure of effort okay we've enabled our our capacity for the different team members right and so now we can see that on this date the 20th on uh, diana based on their daily capacity of eight hours they've got three hours of work assigned remaining capacity is then five hours so uh, it gives you a really great snapshot to understand how are my people doing are they overworked are they uh, approaching their, their their capacity are they approaching their bandwidth do we need to reassign tasks and you can do that really easily as well by taking that task and slipping it to another individual in the project you can shorten the time frames and then that will update as well and so what's nice about that is when that field is added to the project you can go in and you can add what you think that post-mortem sync is going to probably not five hours let's just give it one hour right and so you'll be able to add in those different changes and then you'll see all of those numbers added up in one place last thing i'll show you here is messages so like i said anytime that you have a summary or a status update that gets posted here but if you wanted to create a general message to the entire portfolio or people at least following the portfolio you could do so in this space as well and um, something i'll always recommend is if this is a portfolio that you're looking at quite often like for me in our surface space i have our client projects portfolio 
I want to see what's going on at any given time. I would then star that portfolio and then it shows up in my sidebar right there. Then you can go and you can customize it, change the color, you can copy the portfolio link, send it to someone else. And then what I really love is you have a few export options. So you can sync this to Google Sheets to get more insight into how long tasks are in certain stages. There are so many different data points. I'm not gonna get into them right now, but if you did wanna get more granular information on what's happening behind the scenes of the portfolio itself, you can export it to Google Sheets to get all that information, create different tables and create your own reports if you feel that the dashboard in the portfolio is just not enough information. Then you can export the portfolio to a CSV. If you wanna put it into Excel and you can play with the information there, you can do this. What's really nice here is now for leaders, for the first time, you can export a PDF that allows you to change the orientation of the document. You can show the status or remove certain things if you don't wanna include the status details. If you don't wanna you know, display certain fields, you don't need to. And then there are various advanced settings, but it gives you a really nice, clean, to the point update in the form of a PDF so that you can, uh, as a leader, or you can present this to someone in leadership to give them the snapshot without them, again, even having to be in a sauna or needing to drill down to those projects. And so lots of great things to do with portfolios. Again, you've got to be in at least the advanced, but I would encourage you to check it out for yourself and see what's possible. But I hope you found this video helpful. As always, like this video, share the video, leave me a comment if you have any questions. I hope this gives you the confidence to at least try portfolios if you haven't, because it, it's absolutely gonna change the way that your org works. And so thanks as always for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.